get a lot of really great compliments. You guys run a nice operation, you're professional. That's really great. But the whole point of this video is to establish some humility, to establish some realism. We don't always get it right. We are paying for our failure to get it right from the end of last September. Some dirt cutting that we really didn't think was that bad, but I really did push the moisture and we're suffering the consequences. We have some bales that are going bad. So, what we're doing now is we line up a barren and we actually sort through all of them by hand. There's enough margin in this high quality dirt cutting orchard alfalfa mix that salvaging good ones and setting aside bad ones still pays for itself because you get decent premium for the ones that are good. This type of hay is going to race tracks and high end performance horses. So the premium on it is pretty decent. Justin and I thought it would be cool to show you guys two qualities of bales. One that cured out just fine and one that did not cure just fine. So we'll put them together so you can see the difference. And we'll cut them open. Oh boy, that's heavy. Are we in the sun? No. Not really. So I'm hoping that the color difference is pretty obvious. Have you met our new hired hand? No, who is it? Hey, look, he's in the barn and he's looking in the gravity wagon. <laughs> He's a big guy. He doesn't work yeah, all that hard, though. He can move some hay. <laughs> you need us to throw into a 10-foot loft? No problem. <laughs> no problem. We'll stack it right up there. Okay, ready? What are your thoughts? I, I think this one's real nice here. Yep, I think it is nice. These were from the I same bundle. I think this bundle. one's going to be musty. Yep. Maybe not totally bad. But you can see, see that the, the outside, the quality, the, the green is still nice. And then where it was pushed up against the other bales suffers. suffers. So let's see those beautiful Good. flakes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Prime. Nice, huh? Premium. Hoo -hoo -hoo. I would eat that. It smells good. Goodness. What's the smell? Give me like Andrew Zimmer. I mean, this is fresh. Anthony Bourdain. Anthony Bourdain. I don't know him. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain. Bourdain. The Hay Guy. Bourdain. Maybe I had to ask that guy over there. It just smells good, that's all I can tell you. Good. All right, how about Mr. Must? Ooh. It's not as nice. No? Not as nice. No, he's kind of like sticky too. Yeah, sticky. Tobacco. Not, the dust not wasn't bad, that though, bad. No. Yeah. Huh. I bet that didn't suffer too much in the relative feed value department, but it's unsightly as far as most horse customers are it's concerned. It's really not that bad. No, it's not. No. Color-wise, the flakes are probably stuck pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a small flake, but <laughs> no, not a whole lot of difference. <laughs> what do you mean, not a whole lot of difference? Not a whole lot. My dad would say it's both of them are premium. Well, he's colorblind. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he would say that they're both good. This, my friends, is how you very quickly lose 50 to 70 percent of the value in hay. You jump the gun baling it or the preservative's not ready. We're releasing Farming Insider hats and shirts very soon. So whoever guesses the correct bale price for both of these bales in the next 24 hours first gets a free hat or a free shirt. Your choice. I'll send it to you. You guys are great fans. Thank you and keep viewing. Ready? Gonna have some rough ones here. Rough ones? Rough ones. And the only reason we are sorting it is because it's not all bad. There's only some bales here and there that just didn't turn out the way we wanted. You get some unevenness, especially towards the later end of the season, like September, where the tether might have missed, or we probably should have tethered a certain area twice, or the ground was lying a little more wet, so it was, it was pulling up some ground moisture on the plants before we go into bale. You never really know. I feel that this entire day kind of meshes together because we are changing our entire preservative ball game. We took off, if you've seen our other videos, we had Scylla Prime Gandhi applicators on top that just dropped down pretty much on top of the uh, regular flow of material. We are taking those off. So if you're interested in purchasing any, here they are, Gandhi's. We'll even sell you the custom mount, which fits right on top of the 1840 balers. You just drill three holes and it, it pops down in. There's just a little auger that pushes the material or lets the material fall with gravity down through those tubes. And we are putting Silo King applicators with a blower on everything. We personally feel that this blower, you can see down there, it actually shoots right into where the stuffer arms 
the packer arms push the hay up into the chamber. It's gonna blow right on there. We think there'll be more even coverage of the product. We really like these applicators too because in the tractor module itself, there is a couple different settings we can use. The oh crap setting where this hay is actually wet and we need it, or the, this hay is pretty good, it's pretty dry, but we still wanna lightly dust it just to make sure we have no incidents in the barn. So that's gonna be a great game changer for us. I'll show you, Justin, the expert sorter, feeding it back into our bale barrens. How are we doing? Okay, hey, what's a good bale of hay look like? That's a good bale of hay, huh? I think so, right? It has wonderful color. If you were here, you could smell it. smells really well. There's no visible signs of mold. And you don't see any off coloration where if the hay is baled with too much moisture, it'll actually heat on you. And when it heats, it'll lose color. It'll sort of look like tobacco. And it'll also dust eventually. That, you can see the easy comparison, is a not so nice bale of hay. You got any dust to show them, Justin? Uh, I don't know if this one does or not. It didn't dust too bad, but you can see it is a significantly different color. So we are setting these type of bales off to the side, feeding the good ones back through. So we have 21 bale bundles of nice hay and 21 bale bundles of not so nice hay. There's the color difference. Yeah, look at that. That's not exactly what, uh, that's, not what <laughs> that's not what you want, no. So what causes that, Justin? High moisture. High moisture. Bail with a little bit too much moisture. It could be a combination of bad and our preservative. I yeah, think yeah. Too. I think uh, I think our new route is going to help us keeping our bales good. I think so too. High. Are we feeding good ones or bad ones through? Good. Good ones. So we won't feed this. Store that over here, and we will feed this. Getting it figured out. Right? Getting yep. Every year is a little better. So here's three bales that are all really beautiful. I don't know if the color will quite show up on camera. But we have what well, we need to narrow down and learn, and this year was a big trial and error, so we're happy that we got it over with. These barons have a very tight package, 21 bales. Seven more bales on the Arkison. The middle row doesn't breathe very well. So your tolerance for moisture, at least with the preservative system we were using, was smaller. Um, we didn't really feel, well, at the time we felt comfortable, but looking back at it, we don't really feel comfortable bailing over about 15% moisture with the system we were using. We've transferred to Silo King Dry Hay Variety, and those great guys have promised us a little bit higher tolerances in these packages. We're also going to be putting on a little bit more uniform and treating it more like a science because we're spending a lot of money on this stuff. Do you have any thoughts on doing this five months after it was bailed? Not really the ideal situation. No. Well, ideal thing we want to be doing, but no, this we is don't not want ideal. To send a bad load out for no. one, and for two, I think we're learning some things today. Yep. I, I, the trouble with the way we've been marketing hay is, we could send 777 bales 1,300 miles away. It's kind of hard to make that right. Well, uh, yeah. You lose out on shipping. The customer's unhappy. Storage. There's a lot of issues with bad hay. A couple bad bales. They could say half the load was bad. You yep. know, I and mean, we want to send quality is what we're looking for. Right. Can you tell if they're bad when you pick them up? No, but they're heavy. Yeah, they're heavy. I can't curl it back. So this has some pretty clear discoloring on the top, which you would think would mean the bundle wouldn't be good, but... Yeah, when they're hard. On the top, they're like crusty. Yeah, well, you have good color here, yeah. and not so good color here, so we'll see how it breaks down. Maybe I'll film from this way. It'll be a little bit easier to show you. This is a bundle that is not exactly premium quality. We have significant discoloring here, some dust right there. That's not what we want to make sure it goes to uh, a nice horse facility. And on this end of the bundle, we have really nice hay still. So this is this is why we have to sort. We will likely be able to organize and sort out the off stuff label it as, you know, low quality, cheap cattle hay, and it'll get bought. Someone can throw it in the grinder and grind it up. Or 
set it out in a pasture field and let the animals pick through it. It won't go to waste. No way you'd ever feed this to a, uh, a horse client. Horses are people's legitimate pets. They're around for 20, 30, 35 years. I think a lot of times with our customers, their horses eat better than they do. This is where we tie the whole story together. I might have some dirt on my lip. I tend to do that when I'm evaluating hay. We're ready to hit it big time. Oh yeah. Nailing. All right, Robbie. You ready Start. to open it? Yep. Start us on Christmas. That's gonna be a good pallet for us. We need our packing slip. When I used to work at the supplement store, you went over the packing slip before the driver even went away. Oh yeah? Yep. Just in case there was damage or make mm -hmm. sure it was all there. That was a SOP, standard operating procedure. You should have five of everything. Nice. So this will be the control module in the Ready cab. Yeah, Just no lunch those. today. No lunch today? Staples, you just gotta rip them, huh? Yeah, why not? Be a man! Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Fish? We're gonna put on stainless steel hardware? This side. Show us how it's done, Robbie. Robbie does. Right like that? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then this is the first thing down here. It's 11. The guys did a fantastic job mounting this, and luckily we already had one put on from last year, so it wasn't a completely from scratch setup. I was pretty much just the guy reading the manual. I sort of felt like uh, when you're a kid with your dad, you're holding the flashlight in the car hood. Um, but I let them do the thing and it turned out really well. They mounted all four in very little time. We left one baler unmounted because we'd like to make a separate video mounting the applicator in depth, running the stroke counter in depth, and also mounting our new bale scales in depth. We think that would be a really cool video with all three systems to show you how we do hay just a little bit differently around here. But as you can see, they just mounted up. We have some support bars. They're running the hose down to the uh, blower system where it actually sprays onto the, where I guess dusts onto the windrow going into the baler. Robbie's dealing with the wires, Justin's uh, zip tying it down so everything's nice, neat, and secure. The system looks really good, and we are super excited. Thank you guys so much for being awesome, awesome fans.